<clears throat> now each time we get deeper into the use of the HP Prime in CAS mode as a computers. As we've said before in our previous video, the machine is actually two a calculator in home mode and it's a computer in CAS mode. Today we concentrate on the CAS mode of operation. Let's use the CAS solve function, which is a powerful one, very handy in engineering. Let's say we're given that figure, the red one, and we are told that the area under that curve between t equals 0, down here, and t equals 12, is known to be 70. But the value of k is unknown. We are to find what is the value of k indicated on the vertical axis down here, so that the total area under that curve is 70. That is a simple equation, right? That would be solving that equation. The area under the first triangle is 3 times k divided by 2. The area under the rectangle in the middle is 7 minus 3 multiplied by the height, k. And the area under the triangle on the far right is 12 minus 7 multiplied by k divided by 2. And that must be equal to 70. Let's solve that equation, and we do that in CAS mode. You see that CAS up there? CAS mode. Let's begin. We go to CAS, solve, and use the solve function. We could also type solve, of course. In parentheses, we write the equation we want to solve. 3 times k do not leave out the multiplication sign, or you're going to get a syntax error. 7 minus 3 times k plus 12 minus 7 multiplied by k divided by 2, that is equal to 0. What do I want to solve for? Comma, for k. Enter, that is a solution. Click up here to get the approximated value a75, that is the value of k, a75. Now, let's have a look at our first program on the HP Prime. Two resistors in parallel. Do you remember this situation from physics, right? That we could represent those two resistors by an equivalent value RQ that was computed by the formula down below. But we can manipulate the right-hand side of that equation and write it this way. If we invert both sides, we find out that the equivalent value of the resistance of R1 and R2 in parallel is just multiply them both, divide by the sum. Let's teach the calculator to do that for us. In the HP Prime, the programs are written in a variety of Pascal, which is a high-level language. If you know either C or C++ or C Sharp or Java, Ada, your transition to Pascal should be painless. An HP Prime program has a header and a body. The header exports the name of the program, in this case RR, easy to type, to resistors. In parentheses, the two values as parameters that it will receive, R1 and R2. The beginning of the body is the word begin. The end of the body is the word end with the semicolon. And between what is going to happen, it will return a value. The value is multiply both parameters, R1 and R2, divide by the sum. How about we enter that in the calculator? This is the header, and the rest is the body. Shift, Program, which is the key under one, and then New Program. The name of that program we will edit and will be simply RR, two resistors in parallel. OK. When we do OK, the calculator will create a template for us to fill out. Export the name of the function. We enter the parameters that we're going to pass to the program. And then under Templates block, we have the word Return. Fill out the rest returns the product of R1 and R2 divided by their sum. Check. When we check the validity of the program, it checks not only the syntax, it also compiles the program and makes that available under Home or CAS. Where is that? User, RR, the folder, and the program is RR. Let me use it. The parallel of two resistors, 2 ohms and 7 ohms, is 1.555. That easy. Let's use that in this exercise. What is the equivalent resistance of the group of resistors below? All resistances are given in ohms. We say, well, that is simply, let's see, 
2 in series with 3 in series with a parallel of one group at the top, one group at the bottom. The group at the bottom is 5 in series with the parallel of 9 and 10. And that's going to be in parallel with 4 in series with a parallel of 6 and the series of 7 and 8. Type Enter. All of those resistors are equivalent to approximately 9.5 ohms. Nice. Let's use solve again, but this time in a more complicated exercise. What is the positive value of omega in the expression below for REQ? Show that REQ is purely a real number. Also, for that value of omega, compute the value of REQ. That is the formula. REQ is, you say, what is that? Who is J? J is the imaginary unit. Remember, square root of negative 1. We don't use I as in mathematics because I in electrical engineering is current. You're right. So, that is the equation. And that symbol on the far right, the two parallel lines, that means the parallel of whatever is on the left to whatever is on the right. Multiply then, divide by the sum. If we use symbols, letters, A, B, C, instead of numbers, the expression looks like that. Again, J is the imaginary unit, 0, 1, in rectangular mode. And those two lines represent the parallel of the two values on both sides. We begin by defining, in CAS mode, the variable J. J is defined as 0, 1, is the imaginary unit. And now we define the variable REQ. REQ is, as said before, 1 divided by j multiplied by 17.3. Do not leave out the multiplication operands, right? Multiply by omega. Of course, I have um, w. In series with a parallel of j, 63.7247 times omega and 10.9. That is the definition of REQ. When I type enter, that writes that as a function of omega. Now, solve the equation. The imaginary part of REQ is 0. What should be the value of omega for that? Enter. I get two answers, but I have to use only the positive value because the exercise says so. 3.05958. 10 to the negative 2. Let me assign that to a least variable L0 so that I can assign to omega the second value of the least L0, which is a positive value. 3.05958, 10 to the negative 2. That is the answer. If I type REQ, it evaluates, the calculator does evaluate REQ and gives me what is the value. The real part is 0.337937, and the imaginary part is 2.86, 10 to the negative 12, which is 0 for all practical purposes. Now, thank you very much, and I hope to see you again in our next video.